when you put it in your hand and turn it inside out, it pops. And uh, if you put it on a stable surfa uh, surface, when it pops, it will hop, hop uh, at a quite large height, in fact. And we're going to show a clip of that right about now. What we're going to do is, first of all, measure this popper. Turn it on. Okay. Point oh oh one seven eight kilogram. First, we have the launch velocity. Second, let's put it over here. Second, we have the time to reach max height. Third, we have the acceleration. Uh, so basically the acceleration of the popper before it launches, four, the time it takes to accelerate, five, uh, the velocity of Earth after the whole popping dilemma, six, the acceleration of Earth, not a dilemma, but uh, that was silly, seven, the force exerted by Earth, the popper on Earth, and eight, the force exerted by Earth on the pop. And then we're going to do another few things as well. Uh, concerning energy and energy and, you know, all that crazy stuff. So, oh yeah, okay. So let's get right into it. So first of all. V launch. What is the velo a launch velocity? Well, let's take it into account that we know the launch height. It was 1.55 meters. And also, from now on, I'm going to use a less thick pen. So, uh, we know that Vx squared equals Vi squared plus 2ad. Now, after the pop, we can treat this like any typical projectile motion. It's going to have a velocity equal to zero, right about here, and the velocity equal to its initial velocity, right about here. So we could call this vi and this vf. So vi is what we're trying to find here. We can set vf to zero. So we have zero equals vi squared plus 2ad. So VI squared equals minus 2AD, and VI is just the square root of minus 2AD. Now, you might be panicking, thinking, oh, you have a minus in the square root? That's no good. But remember, our acceleration is negative. It's minus 9.8 for G. So we have VI is equal to minus 2 times G times that 1.55 number. And that gives us an answer of the square root of about 30.38, I believe, which is 5.512 meters per second. Now, 5.512 is a lot of digits to remember, so I'll just shorten it up to 5.5 meters per second over here. All right, so that's that. Next, we're going to find the time it takes to reach max height. That one is a little more simple, And we can do it by using VF equals VI plus AT. Once again, assigning VF and VI over here. Zero equals VI plus AT. Uh, AT is equal to minus VI. And um, T is equal to minus VI over A. Yes, I know it's negative. OK, that was kind of a different type of drum roll. But 0.562 seconds. Three, acceleration at launch. So now, remember that footnote I told you earlier? This guy's got to go. So now, we're going to revamp this diagram. We're not going to remove it, this poor, but, the poor buddy, but we're going to revamp it. So here, we have it uh, when it is unpopped. 
Now, here it is, and it's compressed, I guess, because it's popped. This would actually be the other way around. And here it is, and I guess it's been compressed by two centimeters since it's been turned inside out. And now what we're gonna do is just illustrate the diagram. As soon as it pops, it hits here with VI and then has a VF up there. There, good. So acceleration at launch. We can find that easily using VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. Now here, let's, we've got to think about this. Here, VI, uh, the initial scenario is when the popper isn't even popped yet. In the final scenario, when the popper is just starting to take off the ground. So VF here is actually going to be our velocity of launch. So that's going to be squared 30.4 felt, and then we have the rest. VI is 0 plus 2A and D. So, oh yeah, and D is 0 0.02. So 2 times 0 0.02 is 0 0.04. So A is 30.4 over 0 0.04. And through some magic discovery, we realized that this is 759 point, boop, 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 sorry, I won't keep you waiting, 0.5 meters per second squared. 759.5 meters per second squared. Okay, what about the time it takes to accelerate? Well, that's going to be a little bit smaller of a number. And what we can do to figure that out is use D equals VIT plus half AT squared. Here VI is 0 and VF is the 5.5. Okay, so since VI is 0, we can just set this to 0 immediately. D is 0 0.02 for the 0 0.02 meters half a t squared for a half, 759.5 or some ugly bugly bull crap. And then we have t squared. So uh, we get t squared equals 0 0.04 over 759.5. Uh, 0 0.00725, uh, and the rest of that is gibberish. I didn't memorize the entire calculator. Uh, seconds, I think. Uh, 0 0.00736. Okay. So now, let's erase. This kind of looks like a mess, so let's clean it up. Okay, so now let's erase all the other map. And let's find the velocity of Earth. Now, how are we going to find the velocity? We can do use conservation of momentum, which basically says M before. So M popper before. V popper before, well, M doesn't really change, plus M earth before, V earth before, is equal to M popper af uh, after, V popper after, we'll mark the after with a prime, plus M earth after, V earth after. So what we want to find is V earth after, we know before the pop, both of these are zero because the velocity of earth, we'll just assume it doesn't move, and the popper doesn't move either. The uh, earth doesn't really, yeah, okay. <laughs> that was stupid. So I guess we're doing this from the reference frame of just a human watching from nearby. And from their reference frame, the earth isn't moving, but the popper is. Okay, whatever. So we have zero is equal to 
Uh, M popper, V popper, prime plus M or the earth prime. So that means that M popper V minus M popper V popper prime is equal to M earth V earth prime. So V earth prime is equal to minus M popper V popper prime over M earth prime. And you might be asking why this is negative, but that's because the earth is going in the opposite direction of the popper as in all collisions. Uh, so, and since we expressed the direction the popper was going is up, the earth has to be uh, as positive, then the earth has to be going in the negative direction. Blah, 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 blah. Let's just get to the math. This is minus 0 0.00178. We finally used that. V popper prime would be like 5.512. And M earth is 5.98 times 10 to the 24. It's a pretty small number. About 1.64 times 10 to the, guess the order of magnitude. But da 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 Sorry. It's minus 27. Which is really, really small. Can't even comprehend that. Meters per second. I mean, we c a hair is like 10 to the minus 6. Uh, meters thick. So something that was 1.64 times 10 to the minus 27 meters long is basically negligible. So V Earth is 1.64 times 10 to the minus 27 meters per second. Okay. So the acceleration of the Earth. That's pretty easy. The acceleration of the Earth Oh no, we've got collateral damage. The acceleration of the Earth, we can just use the F equals VI plus AT. The Earth didn't move before the collision, so VF equals A. The T is the same thing as this, because that's the time it took the popper to pop off the ground. And uh, then we have acceleration, it just V final, which was 1.64 times 10 to the negative 27 over 0 0.0073, which should make it bigger, but doesn't make it bigger by much, because it's 2.25 times 10 to the minus 25 uh, meters per second squared, which is about like 200 times bigger, I'm wagering, maybe 150 times bigger, but that's still also basically negligible. Okay, force of the popper on Earth. Well, we can find that very easily because net force on Earth is just going to be sigma F equals MA. M is going to be that 5.98 times 10 to the 24 number. And A is going to be that 2.25 times 10 to the 20 minus 25 number. And the result is about 1.334, I think. That force is going to be one point. Can you guess the last two digits or the last three digits? Okay. Well, it's 1.344 meters. Yeah. Now the thing is, according to Newton's third law, in all collision. Uh, the one object has to exert the same force on the other, the other on one, regardless of their masses. So that means seven should be about the same as eight. So let's see what happens. Okay. So eight is essentially just the same exact formula. So, but this time it's from the popper's point of view. 0.00178 times uh, 759.5. The answer is one point. Uh, can you guess the first three digits? All right, I'll reveal one of them. Three. So we're on track. We're on track, guys. All right, can you guess the last two? Well, they're not 4-4. Four, four but rather 5-2. Oh my god, guys! It's a difference of 0 0.008 newtons! It's the end of the world, I'm telling you! This stuff occurs by just using the impulse momentum theorem. So if the 
equals mv. Well, in reality, it's ft equals delta p. So it's mv final minus mv initial. But before the pop, the initial is just going to be zero. All right. So we just want to find force, right? So we have mvf over time. So force is equal to mass 0.00178 times the velocity final, which was that 5.512 number we found earlier, over the time, which was about 0.0073, if I remember correctly. And that gives you about 1.177 newtons which is almost 1.18 newtons, which is pretty darn close. Only mm, 0.12 or 0.17 or so newtons off, which is okay by my standards. So, uh, actually, we needed VF and T for that, so that would have actually taken uh, three steps because we would have had to do this and this, but <laughs> don't tell them that. Okay. So that's it. Thank you everybody for watching and we'll see you in the next one.